first team coming out here are Mayo, and there's a big, big cheer for them. This is the ground, of course, in which they won the Connacht final last year. Now bidding for a three in a row, and the county hasn't managed that since the 50s. Well, it's the welcome that Mayo got was polite and enthusiastic. Just listen to this. Bridging a gap of 27 years. The tenth time that a Leitrim side has reached the Connacht final. Leitrim will boo, but can they get their second provincial honour? Time will tell. Irrespective of what happens this afternoon, Mickey Quinn has realised a life's ambition to play in the Connacht final. And for someone who began playing for Leitrim at the age of 17, there's a chance of gaining just the county's second provincial title. On the team front, George Dugdale is fit and raring to go after an injury scare, as usual he plays on the 40, and one of Leitrim's strongest lines with Quinn and Pori Kenny also involved. One switch from the 15 that finally saw off Galway is at corner forward. Here Aidan Rooney, who replaced Barney Breen in Chewham, gets to keep the corner forward berth. Mayo's much-changed team in recent years still includes the towering figure of Liam McHale, the only link with the side that played in the 1989 All-Ireland Final. An injury picked up recently in a challenge game with Cork has cleared up sufficiently and he's going to play at full forward. There are two changes from the side that easily got over the impotent challenge of Sligo in Mayo's only previous challenge. Tony Morley and John Conmey get places in the forwards following disappointing performances ten days ago by Roland Golding and Kieran MacDonald in the under-21 clash, ironically, with Leitrim. One way or the other, Leitrim manager John O'Mahony is bound to come under the spotlight this afternoon. Having led Mayo to the All-Ireland final five years ago, he's brought his new charges to a first Connacht final for 27 years which is just one reason why the ever-popular Jack O'Shea may be feeling the heat. So many people are willing Leitrim to win, yet Jack has a job to do, and with the basically youthful outfit, there's a feeling that a Mayo three in a row would be quite an achievement. And it's Garda Inspector Mick Curley from Galway who starts his second successive Connacht final, and already, as you'll gather, some switches in positions. Mickey Quinn, for instance, has gone to midfield. As we watch Pat Fallon advance, looking for the first score of the match. Tapped in. Oh, it's a goal! A disastrous mistake! Well, goalkeeper and fullback really got in one another's way here. And a goal after about 20 seconds in the very first attack. Pat Fallon was probably going for a point. But that's where Seamus Quinn and Martin McHugh got their signals in a mix-up. Come back by Pat Donoghue, Declan Darcy. Putting it forward towards Paulie Kenny, who's yet to get into the match. Liam connell has been on the ball a few times. Paul Kieran's moved just ahead of him here. Getting support here from Paulie Kenny. That looks a better one. He raises a huge cheer. It's taken a while to come. But Corey Kenny from Alan Gales can always be depended upon to take his score. And it seems like Leitrim outnumber the Mayo followers about two to one here. This is where that attack was set up. And Corey Kenny just taking it away. In fact, the referee got on the wrong side of one of the Mayo players who was powerless to put in a challenge, and that helped. One back here well by Mickey Quinn, giving the leadership. Paul Kieran, dispossessed there well by Pat Holmes, now Pat Fallon. And that's where the Leitrim defender just got one hand to it, and that was sufficient to keep it away. No more doing well. Mickey Quinn once again, he's picking up a lot of loose ball in midfield. Broken down here towards Paul Kenny. Kenny putting the head down, making some headway. Getting well past Kevin Cahill, but the angle getting tight at all times. So the referee says push, but that's going to be a free in. So a chance of a second score. Anthony McGarry deemed guilty there of fouling Pori Kenny. And it's going to be a free kick from a more favourable position. Mayo penalised 13 metres, not getting back fast enough. So this is a very straightforward kick for Aidan Rooney, looking for his first point of the day. And it's Leitrim's second. And now there's just a point in it. Leitrim making a slow but steady recovery after the, that disastrous surrender of a goal after about 20 seconds. Very low scoring so far. Lee McHale slipping on the treacherous conditions. Seamus Quinn now coming more and more into the match. Having recovered well. And George Dugdale. 
Leitrim looking for a first success for 67 years in the Connor Championship. Nicely outside. Beautiful ball, Declan Darcy, look what a good position he took up here. The centre half-back and team captain was fouled inside there. So a free kick is the outcome. Great run through the centre there by the attack-conscious captain. They estimate here that two out of every five Leitrim native is here this afternoon. That's the equaliser, and it's Paul Kieran who's got it. May have missed an earlier one, but not this. So Leitrim made a full recovery now after that goal they give away so early in the game. Down to Liam McHale, a buzz of anticipation, on to Colin McMenamin. McMenamin trying to get it back to McHale, succeeds. Looking for just Mayo's second score. Very wide across. Down to John Conmee. On his championship debut, he strikes the upright. Leitrim living a little dangerously. Seamus Quinn taking it out. Taken very low indeed by Porrick Kenny. Kenny seeing a good run across the line there by Aidan Rooney. Getting by Peter Butler's despairing lunge. Ian Conlon over there trying to make that his succeeds. On his favourite right boot. Oh, it comes back off the post. Leitrim out of luck at one end, Mayo out of luck at the other. Now Gary Rouen. Oh, that's a dangerous challenge by Mickey Quinn. He'll get booked at least for that. A challenge on Kevin Cahill. And quite correctly, the name going into the book. And Mickey Quinn will be the first to appreciate that this was a very dangerous challenge. Pat Holmes. This time it's Seamus Quinn taking it out. Noel Moran. Just in over the head there of Aidan Rooney. One back by Michael Coleman for Mayo. Now Kevin Staunton. Colin McMenamin. Remember, it's three points for Leitrim. Just one goal for Mayo. And the people who were saying in the week, in the build-up to this match, that Mayo hadn't been properly tested. Well, their words vindicated so far. And that comes off the post again. Kevin Staunton out of luck, Liam McHale drilling it in, but outside and wide. An exciting passage of play. Well, the upright's been struck at either end quite repeatedly. That's Kevin Staunton's effort coming back down to safety. And that's where Fergal Reynolds was a little slow in closing down McHale. Pat Donoghue poised in there, jumping with his own man. His own man being Paul Kieran. Back to Declan Darcy. Remember the run he made some time ago. Trying to inspire his side once more. Michael Coleman just ahead of him. Corey Kenny breaking it down. Fed inside from Mickey Quinn. Can their most famous and most experienced player score? He can. Leitrim have got in front. It may be low scoring, but if they win the Comet Cup, my goodness, how they'll celebrate. This was a great moment for Leitrim as Paul Kenny played that ball inside from Mickey Quinn to get away from a whole group of Mayo players, kick with accuracy and send them in front for the first time. Well, it's no more than Leitrim deserved to be in front at this stage. Noel Moran, nice ball across to Aidan Rooney again. Nicely taken by Liam Conlon. Now, can he put two between them? He can! That's a great kick. Liam Conlon. Well, it just about reflects the difference between the teams. And when you think that Mayo's goal really was the result of a gift, that's a great kick.
They were in there in a huddle just a few minutes ago, the Mayo selectors considering their options with the half-time break just a few minutes away. Colin McMenamin setting up Pat Fallon, played most of this half midfield rather than on the 40. Nicely out by Pat Donahue. And Paul Kenny is restrained. The referee says that's going to be a free up. In terms of the chances created so far, Leiter have created 15, taken five of those. Mayo created eight chances and got just that one goal in the very first half minute. Paul Kieran's free in towards Colin McGlynn. Trying to reach up for it there, but that's gone wide. Leitrim's seventh wide, Mayo with four during the first half. Mickey Quinn rising up for this again, broken down by Paul Kieran. Kieran showing tenacity, up towards Colin McGlynn again. Picked it off the ground, that's going to be a free up. Taken quickly. Anthony McGarry towards Colin McMenamin. Waiting for Kevin O'Neill to come onto it. He's yet to make the kind of impact he made last season. Instead, it's Joe Honeyman and company who are making the impact. Liam Conlon now just went to ground, free in, stumbled at the most inappropriate moment. This is the first half that's been dominated by Leitrim. No doubt about that. Paul Kieran just coming up to have a word there with Aidan Rooney, both of them free takers as Michael Coleman makes his way back. Shaping up like Rooney will be the one to take it. Leitrim lead this match by double scores. A second point by Aidan Rooney. And once again, joyous celebration for the fans who've travelled here in their thousands. And that's the final piece of action of a first half. Mayo have been most disappointing, quite insipid. Leitrim playing a tenacious and spirited game. And listen to the roar of the crowd as they go in at half-time. The half-time score reads Leitrim six points, Mayo one goal. Badly put under pressure straight away. Be a free in. Paul McGlynn making his way inside. For Declan Darcy, you remember the great point he got here against Ross Common. Did it against Galway as well. John O'Mahony has entrusted him with many of the long range kicks. They are now needing to keep their composure, keep their concentration. And that's a very good start to the second half. So Leitrim stretch their lead, and now they lead by four points. Jerry Flanagan put under pressure again, getting the assistance here of his young fullback Seamus Quinn. High challenge by Liam McHale, that's going to be a free out. On a fair shoulder to shoulder. Comes off Corey Kenny. Waiting for it, Paul Kieran. Dropped in towards Liam Conlon. Out to the ball first time. Aiden Rooney. Is this going to sail over the bar? It is. This is a great spell now for Leeper football. Aiden Rooney's third point. People who thought they'd never see it happen. 1967, they were trounced by Mayo by 20 points that day in the Connacht final. But right now, it's Mayo who are taking a bit of a pasting. Aidan Rooney, and you wonder now, have Mayo got the stomach for the fight? Gary Rowan trying to take it. Kevin Cahill appeared to be challenged as he was trying to pick that ball off the ground. The players who went off, by the way, are Tony Morley and John Conmey. Very players who were brought in in the first place. Mayo really needing an early score now. John Casey, back to Liam McHale. Can he lead the way? Kevin Lydon. Again, will they take that one pass too many? McHale going for the point. This looks to be on its way. Oh, it comes down off the post and the goalkeeper was fortunate enough. Kept his eye on it. And Mayo still struggling to get their second score of the match. Martin McHugh came out, regathered, and that's where he was fouled, taking the ball out. Of 
for Kieran. Tentatively racing across for it. Down for Noel Moore and partially blocked down by Golding. The jersey was tugged there. Jersey of Pat Fallon. And dragged by Noel Moran. Kevin Lydon's kick. Aimed in towards Liam McHale. The big man was being pushed and it's going to be a free in. So here's the chance now for Mayo to get their second score in the fifth minute of the second half. Liam trying to rally the troops. It's going to be Kevin O'Neill who will take it. It's taken a long time, a full 40 minutes to get a second score. Fallon. Michael Coleman attempting to pick this one up. Ball just going astray, however. Aidan Rooney fouled. Vital decisions going Leitrim's way. All the Mayo players, I think, in fairness, were attempting to get back, in particular Gary Ruan, when that was hit against him by Aidan Rooney. Nonetheless, it's Mayo are penalised an additional 13 metres. Peter Butler still making his point to referee Mick Curley. Looking towards the graveyard end of McHale Park. Or Dr. Hyde Park, I should say. And that's over. Declan Darcy, his second point at free. Very definitely in Ross Common. So Leitrim now doing nicely, leading by nine points to 1 1. It's all Leitrim. They've been the better team so far. Now, can they maintain their approach work and their discipline and their sheer commitment? Mickey Quinn. Kicking with accuracy. And over. A second point for Mickey Quinn. Drifting into a wonderful position. But when you think that over the last 17 years, he's only been on eight championship winning teams, three in the last two years, it indicates the kind of career he's had. This is where he was placed beautifully and turned around the pivot and the kick. Lee McHale way back. This is how difficult as may have been experiencing it this afternoon, having to dig deep and forage to gain possession. Pat Fallon. There is waiting. Kevin O'Neill here. With the solo run. Inevitably he will turn onto that left boot. Wasted possession. Nothing really going right for Jack O'Shea's charges. Pat Donahue's kick. Again targeting Liam Conlon. Quick change of direction. Free kick. The direction the referee allows an advantage. And this time it is going to be a free kick. Kick to Leitrim. The winners here, of course, will play the winners of next Sunday's Leinster final between Dublin and Meath. Michael Coleman has been replaced, or has been booked, I should say. Liam McHale, by the way, has now gone to midfield as Aidan Rooney shapes up to get his fourth point of the day. A kickable position for a right-footed kicker. Should be, and indeed it is. Looking like a glory, glory day for lovely Leitrim. But still, what a long way to go. And anything can happen in this game of football. Ronan Golding to Liam McHale. Good run across here by the other substitute, John Casey. Taking Seamus Quinn out of position. Casey showing why he's so highly rated in Mayo. Back to Pat Holmes. Peter Butler. Nicely in. Goal chance stepped on the line brilliantly. And Colin McManaman had a glorious chance. It's going to be a free out. That was a great save by Martin McHugh. Heroes all in the Leitrim colours. McManaman, the one who forced the save from this young goalkeeper. This is that ball right across from Butler to McManaman. He was outside the small rectangle and the goalkeeper got down well.
comes off the chest of Mickey Quinn. And the Leitrim winning by 11 points to 1-1. One, one. Once again, it's John Casey. He's looked a lot sharper than many of the Mayo players who were in from the outset. Free to Mayo. Referee just indicating why. So Mayo trying to eat into the seven-point lead that Leitrim enjoy. Mikhail, great defending. Absolutely wonderful defending. That's belted out by Fergal Reynolds. Down to Aidan Rooney. And Mayo now will have to roll up the sleeves as never before to try and get back into this match. There's still time if they're good enough. But they've been giving way second best throughout this match to Leitrim. Kevin O'Neill. Knocked down brilliantly there by Declan Darcy. Once again, it's Joe Honeyman. Mickey Quinn now. An all-star a few years ago, just after Leitrim won the all Ireland B Championship. But this is the big one. This is the one they want to win in the West. Liam Conlon's kick. And the less said about that, the better. Former star colleges player with St. Mel's. Just a hint of a smile there on the face of John O'Mahony. What a wonderful job he's done. A tough kind of campaign. Taken under pressure here by George Dugdale. Fouled. Very quickly taken. Good thinking there by George Dugdale to Paulie Kenny. That's a point. Kenny's second point. But the product of some very, very alert thinking by George Dugdale. Once again is Ronan Golding. Kevin Staunton now, trying to open it up inside here, Casey from Charlestown, looking for just a third score for Mayo, and that's dropped over, Kieran McDonnell has done it from Cross Malina, getting their third score of the day, but only a goal and two points now against 12 points for Leitrim, Kevin Cahill, wrong footed that time, by Colin McGlynn. Poor pass, however. Taken away by Peter Butler. Liam McHale for Michael Coleman. Pat Holmes, the team captain. Butler has started the move. The falling body there of Kevin O'Neill. Mayo's free kick. Taken quickly by Kevin Staunton. On to John Casey, back to Staunton once again. Well, they need a goal. Point will hardly do. McDonald who got that last score for them. Keeping the point of the attack in the direction of the Leitrim goal. And that's kicked over to very modest applause by Ronan Golding, his first point. Martin McHugh tried to pick out Mickey Quinn, who made his championship debut against Mayo all those years ago. Back in 1978, to be precise. Cleared a foul there by Declan Darcy. Colin McBenamon. Kevin Staunton. Into Liam McHale. Here's a chance. Oh, that's a penalty, surely. John Casey taken down. A penalty for Mayo. This is where... Liam McHale placed the number 17 in the clear, poor marking. And if this goes in, there'll be only three points between them. It's a great save by Martin McHugh. What about great save and the goal counts. Punch back in. There's just three points between them. It may be Kevin O'Neill who got it. Take a look at this again. Goalkeeper moved smartly to his left hand side. Ball came back out from an oblique angle and was fisted in. Mayo still in injury time, looking for a goal that might take this match to a replay. Kieran McDonald firing it in, but just over the bar, when it needed to be under. 
his second point so two between them over a minute of injury time has been played still there's time this is Barney Breen and Breen who just came in and that's going to be a free end a free end for Leitrim this is the sweetest day that so many of these Leitrim fans can ever remember players are already congratulating one another Rooney kicks that's gone wide and it's all over and Leitrim are the kind of champions and John O'Mahony has done it he did it with his native Mayo and now he's done it with Leitrim just the second time the county has ever won the provincial title 67 years ago they last did it my goodness what scenes of jubilation we're seeing here they won it in style there were only two points between them at the end the full-time score Leitrim 12 points Mayo two goals and four the day belongs to lovely Leitrim PJ McGraw, the chairman of the Connacht Council, making the presentation to Declan Darcy. 1927, 1994, there'll be Leitrim people all over Ireland, perhaps all over the world, with tears in the eyes, celebrating the return of the Connacht Championship. The cup goes to lovely Leitrim. And there's Tom Gannon, the two captains who have led this Leitrim side. Tom now 95 years of age. There's the cup, it goes back. What a wonderful moment this is. John, it must have been a very emotional occasion for you this afternoon out there. Well, it was a tremendous occasion for Leitrim, really, Ger. I was absolutely thrilled for all of the players and county board officials and supporters. And uh, they've waited a long time for this. There have been many heartaches along the way. And I'm delighted that all everybody's going home with a smile on their face this evening. I remember the night the draw was made in Dublin. You were there. Uh, at the time, you had to put a brave face in it. Deep down, what were you thinking? Well, it was very difficult to keep the composure on, on a particular night like that because I said, uh, that I think my comment on that night was so much for the open draw. But having said that, when we sat down after Christmas about it and decided to plan on it, I decided, you know, everybody together decided, county board, players, selectors, the whole lot, we decided that if we were to win it, we'd have to win it the hard way. And I suppose that makes it all the more uh, valuable to everybody that was involved now at this stage. We knew going in at half time, we were a few points up, and we knew that the first score afterwards in the second half would be vital. Um, because psychologically, I think Mayo was a little bit fragile, and uh, we knew we had to take it to them in the second half and show that we meant business, and we did that extremely well. We faded a bit in the, in the middle of the second half, but uh, we held out in the end, and that was important. Uh, there were a goal up after about 20 seconds, and uh, we really put our heads down from there on and got stuck into them, and we had six points without reply. So the team showed tremendous character after getting such a blow early on. You seem to be enjoying yourself out there, particularly in the first half. You were dominating around midfield. You, you look like a fellow who was saying, well, this is my big day and I'm going to take it. Ah, uh, yeah, well, we've done a lot of hard work for this, all right. Uh, we trained very hard and I was in good power on the day and things went OK for me on the day. Just a small little bit of jitters for the last 10 minutes. And um, maybe just lost a little bit of control. And um, we were working very, very hard and uh, just felt it maybe slipping a bit away from us, more on nerves than anything else. But I think Declan picked up the reins for us again in the centre half back position and carried it for us then.